On top of there, on top of the machine there, if you um, if you didn't get one of these, this one's just going to be for reference, and it's not the right size, obviously, but it's also not the right colors. We're going to adjust these colors a little bit, but just a reference for how we want it. And this is too centered. I, we're going to shift ours over a little bit. When we get ready to trace, we'll use this one, and I'll tell you where to put it. But it's going to be about there, roughly. Awesome. So a little bit, a little bit different, but. To start with, um, we just got to get some paint on the canvas. We just want to get some color in here, cover everything. Our sky is almost perfectly white on this, and I like that because it lets that glow, that glow happen. So, um, what we're going to have to do first, and since we don't have a big sketch, this is going to be maybe a little bit freehand, but don't freak out. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with just some gesso great gesso on that top. We may have to adjust that later, but start by putting a little bit up there just to have something on the canvas. Work that in quickly. And then I'm going to make a decision about where to start this, um, this line, this horizon line. And for the color, I'm doing a little bit of um, I'm just trying to get something close to that green at the top. It's a little bit of, I'm using ultramarine blue, burnt umber, and light yellow. A little bit of each to give me that grayish green color. It doesn't have to be exact. This is an underpainting right here that we're going to paint over this. This is pretty much just toning the canvas. And I can do a lot of this mixing on the canvas. And not the tree line. We're going to put the tree line in. But the actual horizon line, it's not even straight, so it doesn't matter. It kind of goes uphill a little bit. So don't stress about it. Throw mm -hmm. something in there and then cover the canvas with something. As I go down, I do want it to get just a hair darker, but for now, I'm just gonna put some paint on the canvas. Every bit of this will be covered up. This is underpainting. This is just the toning the canvas, basically. You just wanna get some paint on there to get it workable. As I come down, I'm gonna get a little darker um, a little bit darker color. The colors on here are not as important as the, the value, how dark it is. But as I come down, I want it to get a little darker. My brush does that too. It might. As I come down, I'm going to get it a little darker, not quite that dark. But. And you're working fast because it's, you want to kind of blend it on the canvas. Um, just kind of really kind of aggressively pushing it into the canvas, pores of the canvas. At the very bottom is where it'll be the darkest and it's a little more green down there, but like I said, the color, not as important as having the value because we are going to cover all this up. Um, don't even think about what it is yet. It's just one lighter color at the top fading to a darker color at the bottom. I, I do like that this gets a little bit more vibrant when it gets to the bottom, a little more, you know, bright color. And then I'm going to kind of just smooth out all my brush strokes. Not perfect, it doesn't matter. It'll be covered up. This is just going to make it easier to paint on. So let's get that far, and then we're going to put that uh, the little glowing... Uh, Growing trees in the background. We're going to start at the top. We're going to ignore everything from here down that's just that's blocked in, okay? It's going to be hard. The color is not the same. Don't worry about it. We're going to be able to adjust the color later. We're going to focus on these this little section of trees right here. Uh, notice how they have that glow coming through behind there. That's, mm -hmm. that's to me, looking at this picture, that's one of the most important parts of it. I like, I like how the glow is. It looks like either first thing in the morning or you know last bit of light in the evening um, and that color those colors are found in the top of the mailbox here too which we're going to make sure we do that but in order to get that glow effect we're going to do it in three layers um, starting with sort of a yellow um, a yellow layer so I got a little bit of magenta here too so we're going to do a yellow layer um, that's got just a touch of magenta in it so it's a little bit of orange and I mean a little bit, that's too much. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, there's no such thing as a little bit of that color. 
but just the tiniest amount of white in it too. I went bright. It, it, it looks almost out of place, you know, when you put it on there. All right, so this our our line kind of runs down the hill, but the trees kind of level it off. So they're going to kind of start up here and kind of work their way back down towards the, the baseline there. Um, so each layer is going to go a little smaller so it has that glow effect, but it's not perfect. I mean, you can't tell, you can't see an exact line of where they end up. So start with, I know I want my trees to come up to about here, and don't don't try to paint trees, Just this is just paint, just blob some paint on there, okay? That very top edge, I'm going to get some of this paint off my brush, that very top edge, I really want it to be kind of soft. And it works better when the brush is a little bit more dry. So that, so that works. Some of them are almost invisible at the top. But I don't want any real hard edges on the top. It don't matter, it don't matter if you get it on your green. Again, we're gonna paint over all of that. If you use just a little paint, a little water, it'll go further and it'll dry faster. So by the time I get to the end, I'll be ready to come back and do my next color. Just kind of scrubbing it in. Knowing that it's going to be three layers of it, so it doesn't matter if it's a little bit less than solid. But those top edges soft and fuzzy. Take the dry brush and kind of make sure they scrub out as much as I can. Okay, and that's pretty much dry already. Just kind of smear it around and let it dry. Hit that for like three seconds for me with the blow dryer if you don't. You get more of a peach color, mm -hmm. um, but remember our, uh, our brown is a red too, so that's more of a darker red. So if you can put a tiny amount of that of that uh, burnt umber in there if you want to get it a little more dark orange, a little more true mm -hmm. orange. That's pretty close, to, pretty close to where I want to be right there. A little tiniest bit of white. The white helps make it a little more solid. Yellow is very, very transparent. So that's about what we're looking for. Kind of an orange, a little bit peach. This next layer, I'm gonna start down here and get a lot of this paint off my brush. Just kind of getting the paint off. Then come up here and the same kind of thing. I wanna go almost all the way to the top edge of that. And really gentle at the top edge. I don't want any hard, hard lines at the top. So that yellow see is showing through the orange paint. But don't cover up all your yellow. You know, in, in spots you can go above it, but it, it, in general, you need to be able to see the yellow through, uh, through the orange. But I do want to go all the way down with it, even though I know I'm going to cover all this up, because if you don't, it's going to be the color will change at the bottom because all this paint is very transparent at this point. All right, same thing over here. I'm just going to put some paint down and then push it around. Really soft, fuzzy tops. That looks fast and messy, and, and that's that's what it should do. You should do it quickly. <laughs> if you're spending a lot of time taking it slow, you're just gonna you're not gonna like it nearly as much. So I think that is probably dry enough to go on. More important, those the main thing is get those bright and leaves of yellow showing through. But look what color this is. It's not 
at all green, we can isolate that color. It's gray, mm -hmm. basically. It's a gray, and I would say even a gray that kind of leans towards purple. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got that magenta in it. Yeah, it's definitely got magenta. So I'm going to start with, you know, for gray, you pretty much use all your colors, but I'm, I'm going to start with a uh, purple. I'm gonna start with some magenta and some uh, blue. Mm -hmm. Get myself a purple that I like first. A little bit of white. And then the, the uh, well, the opposite of purple is yellow. Mm -hmm. So that yellow is actually going to work to make the, the shadowy side of it, mm -hmm. you know. So that's going to turn it to that gray that you want. That's, see, we're getting yeah. close to that color already. Mm -hmm. It's an odd combination of colors to mix. But that's pretty mm -hmm. doggone close. Right yeah. there. A little more white. And if it's too pretty and vibrant, you can put a touch of uh, burnt over it, it'll tone it down a little bit, but I think I like that. Um, I do want to make a little more of it, I didn't make enough paint, <laughs> but let me uh, try to get a little darker too. Purple and yellow. So now this line, again, I don't want perfect trees now at the top. So I'm not trying to put leaves and make perfect. I want to get a lot of the paint out of the brush. But the tops of these can be a little more defined. Um, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. I'm just going to put, put some color on there. Now at the top, I want it to, to be a lot more transparent. So kind of light and lacy kind of at the top. But as I get to the bottom, and I want to make it a little more solid. A more solid towards the bottom. Again, speed is, speed is your friend <laughs> on this. Don't worry about trying to straighten that bottom line up. It's going to be made over. Maybe come back when I'm done and do a fourth layer just on the bottom of these trees just to solid up the bottom just a little more. But if there's some parts that are a little more solid than others, that's okay too. See how that, that's working to create that kind of glow effect? If you do like me and don't make enough paint, you got to be confident enough to make the same color again. <laughs> Well, you want it very sun. And if it's very sun, that's fine. Yeah. You never get the same. <laughs> and that, you know, the, the color that we're seeing and making and comparing it here, it changes when you get it on there. Mm -hmm. It's mixing with that color underneath. So. too purple that yellow underneath will, will gray it up for you. Mm -hmm. Everybody think I can do that? Mm -hmm. so I, may, I don't know if I will or not. I may just use like what I got right here. Trees reflected in the algae pond. Yeah. Yeah, they do. It's not dry enough to cover, but I'm gonna come back with what I've done and get the bottom of this just mm -hmm. to be a little more solid to keep my glow at the top. But that's what you want. It's a little bit of just a glow off in the distance. Uh, let's get that far, and then we'll start. <laughs> now we got to get these colors more accurate on this on this uh, grass hill. We're gonna spend too much time on that. Um, because obviously the subject is going to be the mailbox. We're going to spend more time on that, but we definitely want to get our our line in here, that uh, horizon line. This one kind of goes down, like I said, it meets, it starts higher, it comes down, and meets 
uh, the trees kind of straighten the top of it up. If yours is not that way, it doesn't matter. I mean, this is this is not important. That line being at an angle is not very critical to the composition of this. Just whatever looks right for yours will work. What is critical is going to be these colors. And making these colors is, uh, it, it's not going to be one color all the way down. You know, and it's not even just going to be one color getting darker as it goes down. You see all these different shades in here that I was kind of playing with and pre-mixing? So the trick to these colors are, um, it shifts colors about every, you know, inch or so. If you look at how, they, how the colors change as they go down, the basic green color is going to be yellow with a touch of blue in it. And it's not 50-50 yellow and blue. It's like 80-20 yellow to blue. It, it Maybe even not even that much blue. So you got a lot of yellow, a little touch of blue. But if you were to put that color straight on, just that yellow and blue, it'd be, it would look cartoonish. It'd be too vibrant, too bright. So to tone that green down, we're going to use magenta to temper that green a little bit. And so to start with at the top, um, some of these colors don't even look green. You know, if you look at them isolated like that. So to start with at the top, and this plate is covered in paint, but it's dry, so I'm just going to use it to mix over it. I'm going to start with a lot of yellow. And every step of the way, we're going to put just a tiny bit of gesso in there just to make it a little more solid. That yellow is see-through. You could paint that yellow all day, 20 layers of it, and you're still going to be able to see through it if you don't put a little gesso in it. Little, you got to put just enough so it doesn't actually change the, the value of the yellow. So yellow and blue gives me a vibrant green that I don't want to use. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's pretty, pretty vibrant. That wouldn't, that'd be too bright. Yeah. But by putting just the tiniest amount of magenta in it, it, it kills it just a little bit. It gives me more of a, that color. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm a little, that's a little bright for off in the distance, but if I make a color, I can kind of come down this list here and kind of see where that color fits in. It's about right here. And now it's going to it's gonna mix with what's behind it. See, as it goes on the canvas, it looks completely different. It looks mm -hmm. like straight yellow. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to go in, in sections like this and just kind of put some paint in. And I'm just kind of using an up and down stroke. I'm not making a whole plate full of paint. I, I just want to put some paint mm -hmm. in this section and kind of blend it out. If I keep doing that section at a time, eventually I'll have all these colors in here, then I can kind of blend them and smooth them is what my plan is. So I'll start each time with just a little green. The, um, the amount of magenta that you get in it is going to determine, you know, where it falls on that list, on that, on that you know, little list Colors. of colors on the side here. As I get to the bottom and I want it to get darker, that's when I go with a little bit more blue or a little bit more... Uh, a little burnt umber in it as well. So this color is going to be closer to what I need at the top. Mm -hmm. So my top line, I wanted this to kind of start low and kind of go up. It's going to take a couple of layers to cover that up. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a little bit of tiny amount of gesso in that to make it a little more solid to cover it up too. But this, don't think about texture of grass. Don't think about painting grass, just, you're just blending colors. So at this point, you're just blending the colors together. And it is going to take s several layers of this to cover that. Is it watery then? This is pretty dry because I want it to kind of fade one color into another. Okay. But, like I said, it's going to take a lot of layers to cover that top, mm -hmm. that top section. So I may have to go a little creamier with this next layer. If I can get a little more paint going. Just stay away from those really pretty cartoon, <laughs> you know, crayon green. That is not your friend. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> that one is a little too blue, but it kind of fits in. That's not too bad if I put it up here, it might look better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does look better because it's got all that yellow mm -hmm. under it. Uh, this, that color helps a little more. Mm -hmm. When you're doing kind of dry and a little at a time like this, you just got to make sure you don't leave hard lines. Mm -hmm. Hard lines are hard to cover up, so you kind of come back and feather the edges 
and it's going so fast it'll dry by the time I get my next color made this color will be dry and I can come down with it so I know I want this next color to be sort of that one but with more yellow in it it really is just kind of trial and error when you're making these colors make a color and see if it fits anywhere on your on your uh, sheet here and if you end up with something that's not exactly what's there that's okay too that's a little vibrant. I'll tone it down with the next layer. Put a little more magenta in that. You don't want to get too much water in this either because this, this type of blending doesn't work good with water too much. If you work quick enough, you can do a lot of this on the canvas and put some magenta straight on the canvas and just blend it in and it'll, it'll work mm -hmm. you know, like that. You've got to be quick. You can't be sitting in front of that fan. <laughs> yeah, you definitely, definitely can't do that. A little bit more of that magenta in that section. strokes right now either if you get the main colors on you can always come back with washes over the top and fix your brush strokes if anything I probably want my brush strokes to be kind of this way anyway eventually yeah downward for sure now as I get towards the bottom like I said it's going to have a little bit of that um, brown in it If you struggle with green, if you're just starting to struggle with green and you're painting trees or whatever, a good trick to kind of master greens is start with black. So make a black out of blue and brown and add a little yellow to it. Or even if you wanted to really cheat, like Brian does sometimes, and uh, <laughs> use blue out of the tube. I mean, a black out of the tube. If you just use black paint and put a little yellow with it, it makes a more manageable green that looks more realistic than what you're and what you can uh, make out of yellow and blue a lot of times. And that's got a lot more blue in it towards the bottom. Mm -hmm. Work quick, scrub it in. Strokes. Like I said, if, these, if it ends up showing brush strokes, so what? You have a painting. Mm -hmm. so it's got brush strokes. <laughs> now, only at the very bottom does it get a little bit more vibrant blue. It's kind of got that really fresh green looking color. A lot more blue in it. But we'll do some more uh, detailed stuff to this bottom. I don't look too worried about it being perfect down here, but that's where the color shift happens to the mm -hmm. to that bright blue, I mean bright green. Do some actual grasses and things down in the foreground. But it kind of went full circle. You had a lighter color, went a little more red in the middle, and at the bottom it got a little more greeny. You know, mm -hmm. and yours may not be exactly this, and this isn't exactly what's matching the. Uh, the picture here but as long as the colors are there. you make your colors with these three four colors that we're using on you know in here and they'll all match together we just don't want it to be a solid wall of green you want some colors variations 
The distance is a little darker. It gets a little more reddish, lighter in the middle, mm -hmm. a little darker at the bottom. So starting out, we don't, um, we're going to put our, we're going to block in our mailbox tonight, try to get that far at least. But before we do, I want to be completely done with everything behind there down to this foreground grass and the fence. I want to have all that background stuff. So at the end, we can put this foreground and these little vines going up, these little flowers. But all of that in the back, I want to have that done before we even block in the mailbox. And all that's really left to do is a little bit of texture. Um, you know, you could look at this, there's not a whole lot of texture in the picture, um, a little bit in this foreground. But one thing I do want to do, looking at mine, it gets a little too green right here uh, for me, right where the top of this hill meets the meets the background tree. So I'm going to kind of soften that. It's too warm is what it is. With warm makes it seem closer to you and cooler is further away. So I'm going to kind of cool that down a little bit first thing. Um, and you may or may not need to do this step, um, but if you do, at this point, and this is kind of what we do, you know, we're going to kind of just put some color on the canvas and then we can tweak it by, you know, washes and things, layers of real thin washes. So it's kind of what I'm going to do here. We'll start with like a, um, a lighter, uh, almost like a mint green, I think, that I want to try up there. Put a little bit of that red, that magenta in it, just to calm it down a little bit. I think, so that's a much cooler, cooler version of it. I could have used a, a square brush or something for this, but I'm just going to kind of put this in here. It doesn't have to be um, too perfect. I really want to be able to see where the land stops and where the trees start, even though this is a little different than what's in the picture. Um, what I'm going to do is just put some paint on here and then kind of put some water on it and blend it down. And if I leave some gaps in it, that's fine. Now back here, I'm not really worried about grass texture as much as just variations in color. I mainly just don't want it to be one solid, you know, swath of color. <laughs> just smooth it out the side. Put more of a horizontal stroke. This, if you put the paint on, let's come back with just straight water and push it around. It's an easy way to do this. Kind of work it down a little at a time and eventually it just fades into nothing. Just finish off the strokes going that way. I, I think that'll just do the job to give me just a little bit more separation up there. It just looks like maybe the sun is landing on the top of the hill a little more. That work a little bit better. Now that same type of thin washy stuff is what I want to do for the texture going down. I don't want that much white in it though. I'm gonna make a uh, I'm gonna make a blue green. That's a little more magenta in it maybe. Same colors we've been using, so I'm not really going too much into detail about how to mix these colors. It's just everybody's is slightly different, but you want something that'll just enough that it'll show up on there. Um, slightly different than what's behind it. If yours is lighter, you may want a darker color. If it's darker, you may want a lighter color. And I'm using this stiff bristle fan brush because I am going to make some just texture down here. Just some rough, grassy, and this is just the putting the paint on the canvas part right here. Just put some paint. And I did a little bit of this last week so you can see a little bit of the streakiness behind there. But really just doing the bottom yeah, maybe a third of the canvas. So once the paint's there, I'm just going to wash it all out of my brush while it's still wet on the canvas. Come back with straight water and just kind of scrub that in. I really just want it to look like it's running. You know, the paint, I, I like for it to look a little more like paint, you know, like a painting. I want it to kind of look <laughs> runny to a degree, but give the effect of kind of blurry grass, if that makes any sense. And you can do as little or as much of this as you want. If you want yours to look more um, impressionistic or more, you know, I guess painterly is the word you'd use, I guess, for <laughs> it looks like paint. It looks like a painting more than a, than a photo. Uh, but I don't want it to look like an Easter bunny photo with a perfect blade of grass. Don't, don't come in here and paint 
perfect blades of grass. And the closer I get to the top, I want to scrub out all that, all that grass blade texture as much as I can at the top. It kind of fade off into oblivion. And by using water like this, it'll look different when you're put, putting it on. When it dries, you won't see as much of this. It'll kind of blend in a little bit when it dries. Um, that's probably about as much as I want to do with that. I may, I may do some, uh, some just like flicking. Um, you do some of that too. A little slightly different color. Now, if you do this, don't put too much on the table. <laughs> um, you can help it. Let's pick up darker. Just want to dirty it up a little bit. It's a little too, too perfect. It may have too much paint on it. Take a little bit and just kind of put some. Just some stuff. You know, these are what gra grass and leaves and stuff just floating around in the background. But, uh, th th this stuff is this is definitely part of that level of as long as it don't look wrong, it's okay. As long as it's not horrible, it's fine. Um, we don't want to spend too much time on this. We'll do we'll give you all about 20 minutes to work on this, and we'll come back and start tracing in our uh, these. We got one of these little printouts. Um, I printed it pretty light on there so we can see our pencil marks. All we need to know about this is use a ruler. If you want to use a ruler. Where'd it go? There it is. Pretty. Appreciate it. Um, for, this, for this top uh, closure section of the mailbox right here, eight inches from the top, eight inches from the right side. So roughly. I mean, you, you, this don't even have to be exact. You can put it kind of right in there. It's going to be about where we want that. Now, yeah, kind of about right there. And you're measuring to that. Yeah, okay. eight, just down to that little, you know, the little clamp clamp on the top of the mail. Where we call that? Very top of the mailbox. Um, that gives us a, that gets it a little bit off center. Makes it a little bit more interesting. It lets you lets you kind of draw in a little bit further into the picture. If you want to put yours just a hair higher, you could. I'm going to go up just a little bit higher. But the more you go high, the more you got to deal with the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay, the trick, because you're going to have to trace this once, paint it, block it in, and then trace it again. So the easiest way to do this is to tape it down first. And it's already crooked on the paper, so you ain't going to worry about getting it real straight. Move it all over the place out there. The trick is tape the paper down. Don't tape the the uh, tracer paper down or the uh, transfer paper down. Just kind of slide it under there to draw. But before you even start drawing, Make sure you have <laughs> I'm going to mark I'm going to mark a place, let's say down here where I can hide it later, where I have the corner of the paper Like that. Make sure you line it back up. So when I put it back, I'm going to do another one on this other side. So when I put it back, I can put it in the same place. Falling off the back back there. Marks. And sometimes you got to hold it in the light to get it to, to see where those pencil marks are. But having them at the bottom, they'll be easy to cover up. I'm not going to put any up here because that's not going to be painted on anymore. So yeah, put that there, slide this under. Make sure you get the shiny side to the canvas. Yeah, that Everybody's learned that lesson before three or four times. And all we want to do to start with is just get the very outline of it. Um, don't worry about the fence and everything yet. We just want the very outline of the... I'm probably going to lay this down to do it a little easier, but I don't even care about the little clasp yet. At the top, you kind of got to gotta see what you think the top is. We're just going to paint this in with gesso to begin with, so really just want this outside line. And this is a little dark behind here, so it's going to be kind of hard for it to show up. So make sure I push down pretty hard now. I'm not using the uh, the lead of the pencil at all. I'm just using the plastic. Uh, the plastic of the pencil shows up good enough. And we're going to extend that on down. It disappears into the grass at the bottom, but it's going to go a little further down than that. So trace that in. You can see you can barely see it. And then just put a layer of gesso on there. I've got some white paper if anyone wants to buy
we got to uh, first thing is to sketch in all the shadows and lights and I did a little more this time than I normally would do just with some shading cross hatching just to kind of tell me where the dark areas are um, if you haven't done this before uh, good trick with these tracings if you we mentioned marking the corners and that works to a degree but if you cut out little sections like this where you have sharp corners that you can line up it's pretty easy to put that on there and get it exactly where you need it so if, so once we paint a couple of layers and you lose your lines you can use this again and go back and draw your same plate shapes back in but the big thing is and, and when i when i printed this i lightened it a little bit because it had it was just so dark and even in the photo that mailbox is pretty dark i don't want it to end up that dark mm -hmm. But I do want the dark values. I do want this dark shadow under here to be dark. So looking at this picture, we want to we want to mimic the values here, but darker. Uh, this, is, this is a lightened version of it. So think of it in terms of about like three different shades, three basic shades. You got a mid, a light, and a dark. And so to, we know to make, make black is just blue and brown, equal parts will give us something close to black. Not really worried about color right now. This is just value. That dark, that black right there, the darkest of the dark, um, is going to be my really dark areas. And it may take a couple of layers of this, and that's okay. And you just use whatever brush you're comfortable with. This is a little flat brush. Let's kind of get in there. Um, but go ahead and have it out on your on your palette the three shades. You can start with the dark, add a little, I'll let it lean a little more towards the brown side. So see how that looks? You got three pretty distinct values there. Obviously you can see the darkest areas with the darkness underneath the, this piece of wood. The top of that pole is really dark, around these bottom edges is dark. Um, the lightest part is going to be the very top of the mailbox here. The rest of this is going to be mid. This side is a little bit lighter than that side altogether. And the same for this pole. It, it is a, I don't know, in the picture if it's a round pole or a square pole, I'm going to commit to making mine square because I like how this light side and dark side works. So I can have it a little bit lighter there than a little darker there. Um, but just, let's start there. Go through and just blocking in your shading. You don't have to worry too much. Where it's a smooth transition, where, where it's kind of a gradient right here, you know, use your finger and kind of smear them, smear them together, but it doesn't have to be a perfectly smooth. We're going to put, this is an under, underpainting, we're going to come back and put color layers and you'll be able to uh, smooth out some of those transitions later. But make your darks dark, plenty dark, and your lights light so you're, you know, to get everything in the right place. If you don't, if you worry too much about color, then you're going to end up, it's going to end up looking two-dimensional. Like it's just taped onto the front of the picture. All right, so let's get that far, and uh, we'll pick up from there. So we're painting the whole mailbox, the whole, that light gray? The whole thing, this grayish, three tones. Okay. So I got my, my lighter color. It's going to be kind of the whole thing. You know, this stuff up here. And then the mid-tone stuff is more... So got it all in in, in grayscale, and we just got to color it. Um, I said before, this is a little darker than what I want to end up with, and it's a little bit of all the same color. The gray is the same tone, and that's partly because of the lighting and everything, but I think I want to distinguish the colors just a little bit different between the wood and the mailbox. I like the blue tone of the mailbox with the rust color. And I like that there's a little bit of that rust color down here too, but I want to get a little more brown, I think, with the uh, with the wood. Um, I've got some burnt, it, uh, it's not burnt sienna, actually in that brand it's called what? Red ochre. Red ochre. But I'd rather not, if you want to use that you can, it's really strong, but you can make this color with just magenta, yellow, and brown. Um, you can make, this is the one I've mixed and that's the out of the tube color. I'd rather mix it because then it uses all the same colors we've been using. But I think I want to use a brown, let me start with my burnt umber. And I'm going to put just a little bit of this 
magenta in there. That's maybe too much magenta. A little bit of yellow. <laughs> See how that does? It makes it a little bit, a little bit reddish. Go a little bit more of the burnt umber. Maybe even a touch of blue just to darken it a little bit. So the trick of this is I've already got the light and the shadow in there. But now I just want to put a little wash over it. So I put a lot of water in this. And then since I mix it with this brush, I think we'll go ahead and just wash this brush out some to make sure that I got mostly water. This, watch how this works. All you got to do is put a thin layer on top of everything. Your shadows and, and everything will show through. And it just looks, looks like it was supposed to be that color. Don't put any gesso in this, that's important. The gesso is gonna, gonna change it overall. Now, this will just give me kind of a base coat. Wash, just a first wash. Once this is dry, I might come back and do a little different color here and there. I do wanna get some of that bright red color kind of in certain spots and let that show up a little more. Um, but for now, that's, that's about the color I want for that, for that pole. Um, and it might go a little different color. You, yours can be whatever you want it to be. A really slightly different brown. Maybe for the wood at the top. That'll show up a little bit differently. It's going to look different when it dries too, so do this in a thin layer. Do one section, move on to the next section, let it dry, and then uh, revisit it, you know, because it's going to it's gonna change when it dries a pretty good bit. Especially when this paint is thin like this, it changes a lot when it dries. That's it right there. That makes a difference. So that, you know, simple little one thin layer of, of uh, color on there. Now for that mailbox, I like the kind of bluish gray tint of it. Let's see if I can make a little bit of that. That's going to have to have some gesso in it to be, to lighten it. I'm going to pull some of this ugly brown that I have into it. That's kind of a rusty color, but it's kind of got a blue overall shade to it. The thing is, when you put gesso in there, the gesso is more solid. So you gotta make sure you got plenty of water so you don't paint over over anything. Shade of rust. It's just a just a thin layer. I can come back and double up on my dark, but the really dark spaces if I want to intensify that later. It's best just to build this in real thin, washy layers. The top is pretty light. Let that stay pretty light. But this rust on here, to make that rust color, you're going to use all three. You're going to use your burnt umber, magenta, and yellow, and even a little bit of blue. And you're going to use all four colors, really. Um, so we're going to make a kind of a dark start with some of this dark brown it just takes a little bit of each color to get that orangey looking rust the yellow is what makes it orange looking when you get a color that's pretty close it's it looks a lot different when you get the water in it but for the the drips on the mailbox I mean the, the stuff running down like that you can literally just put it on there 
soaking wet, just put just you know puddle of water. Just kind of puddle it on. And then come back with pure water. And I probably should have dried everything under here first. But I'm gonna paint some pure water down here underneath. And then when you sneak up and touch it there, it'll grab it, pull it into that water. Run down. Mm. That's what you want. Let's we'll kind of drip it. I don't worry about that that arm. I'll fix that later. But there's a there's a pretty. It does go both directions. But let the water do the work for you. I'll let that line dissolve a little bit. See how that works. And one layer looks good, and when that dries, and the second layer looks even better. Vary the color just slightly, put another little layer of it. Um, we got a lot of it happening right here. Might turn it upside down, let it drip that way to go from the bottom half here. We want to put some of that rust color in here. And it's just these real thin, washy, washy layers. And if you, uh, you know, if it drips out of the way, you can wipe off your finger, but. And that's how it creates that, that running down. That's what we want. So colorizing, layering, and that we'll put, do that for the rest of the night. Next one is just all of this stuff at the bottom. We got to put the fence in, and we got to get all these grasses at the bottom. I do want to try to get them bright green, kind of the way they are on the bottom here. But before we even get to that, um, it, I'm thinking of it kind of in terms of three layers. The stuff behind the fence, this tall, these tall weeds, and I may accentuate those just a little bit with those little flower buds, things popping up over here. And uh, so we put all that in first because it's in the back, and then the fence, and then the grasses and things in the front. And and don't don't leave out some of this dark, ugly gray, you know, ugly just dead stuff down here too, because that gives it character. These little vines climbing up the fence. Um, but pretty much from this point forward, it's going to be see what yours needs and and do what you want to do there um kind of but color wise um i want to try to get like i said get bright on the bottom if possible brighter green not super super bright but a little brighter but to start with i think i'm going to start by putting some of these uh taller ones in now you notice in the picture they don't stand out all that much you can only really see the tops of them um, and that's partly because some of this grass starting in here, these little top edges kind of cover some of that up. Yeah. You can see a few that go behind the mailbox, a few that are scattered here and there. And these are just weeds, there's nothing special about them. The challenge to this is going to be making a color that you can see with the, for the green part that you can see against your background. Um, my background up here Let's see, it's pretty dark. I think I do want to go darker though on that. Let me try that first. If it's dark, you can go lighter. If it's light, you can go darker. But I think I want to go pretty dark with that, uh, that stem. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's probably. And it don't, I'm gonna do just enough. Make it just imply something there. And I'm not really going to follow that to tell kind of where they go. Just a couple little spots here and there where there's just weeds that kind of come all the way up. I like how they kind of cluster at the top sometimes. Like a tree weed. A little bit. <laughs> Kind of letting them be a little thicker at the top. Yeah. Do a little bit of that along. I don't want any of it really to, uh, just make sure it don't, it don't kiss the mailbox and where it comes up and just yeah. touches very much on the edge. But I do like to have something kind of coming up behind it. Maybe something that disappears behind there. Just to give some depth to that. And maybe even some that show up above it. Let's see how much I like this. If I do, I'll leave it. Let 
it's gonna be hard to get that to work right without it without it kissing it. And I don't know if I like that or not. It looks like it's growing out the back of it. <laughs> Good part about acrylic, you can try it and wipe it. Appreciate that. Um, but I'll come back and do some of those and figure out where I want stuff. But as I go, but the key is I want to make sure I get some of this bright. Uh, this red uh, magenta in here. The magenta that we've been using to tone down the colors of the grass is a really good accent color for that. I don't want too much white in it, but pretty good accent color for that uh, green grass. And it don't take much of it to really, to really stand out. There's a couple little things here and there. I'm probably going to do some white stuff. If you do white, I will tell you this. As we um, as I come down, I'm gonna put a lot more kind of lighter grass in, kind of abstract looking grass texture, where it's just you know kind of just a lot like that. This brush don't hold much paint. But the good trick is to kind of put it on wet, and then you can kind of keep running the brush back and forth and kind of scratch it around. If you're worried about your um, your uh, fence post there, you can put a little piece of tape over it no, to get the stuff going behind it. But I want some of this to kind of curl too. Um, some of this grass to have it so it's not all straight up and down. Kind of curl some of it, especially towards the top. But it just gives a good thick, you know, brush back there. But it's still going to come down further and put thicker stuff in front of this. This is just the the top parts. But I was going to say, if you do some white, and I'm skipping around, I know, but I'm going to go across and do the whole thing with this. If you do white, and I do want to do some white flowers, start with gray. Start with some that's just a uh, pretty good, pretty good bit gray, and put a few. I might even convert some of these spots I have on here. Just try to make some, just mm -hmm. some little suggestions of flowers here, especially towards the bottom here. Start mm -hmm. with gray and do a few that way, and then when you come back and do some of them white, I still want to shy away from pure white, probably a lot lighter, but not pure white. Then those white ones will look like they're above the above the shadow line. You I don't want a garden back here. I may be doing too much here. <laughs> to show, but, but even on top of some of the gray ones, you can make one of the, you know, one or two of the petals, or just a, a portion of it lighter. It kind of looks like shadows. But build it in layers. You start in the back and kind of build layer, layer, layer. But I want it thick and kind of like a jungle at the bottom down there. And then we'll put that bright stuff down at the very bottom. Trace. If you trace in your fence, you only got a little small section of it, so you got to take a ruler or something and kind of draw the rest of the lines. But you notice that top top barbed wire is by itself, and then below that you've got the squares, you know. And it's pretty important for those that they're fairly straight, although it's not perfect. It's you know, um, it'll look weird if you get them too too crooked because they are. They, it was perfectly square when they installed it. Let's put it that way. Um, but here's an easy trick for painting those straight lines, especially when you don't. <coughs> they don't need to be uh, too too dark too noticeable they just need to be good enough I'm gonna make some black make a little bit here enough. and making that with a brush so I can use this brush we'll make it a little bit more brown because it is barbed wire but it's pretty much black Take your uh, your ruler like this okay. and paint a little mm -hmm. paint a little uh, paint on the end of it like that on the side of it. You don't want it to cake up too much. But you can take that and if you're careful, you can just kind of touch it on there real quick like that and get you a perfectly straight line without having to fight with the brush and it'll keep them all uniform. It don't matter if it cuts in and out like that, that's fine. 
but I'm just going to put my lines in that way. It's real quick, real easy. Sweet. Put a little paint <laughs> and just touch it. Now I did trace these in there so I could see where they go, but now I can't see them. So. You want to borrow my glasses? I think that's probably close enough. <laughs> I'll let you. Don't kick it on there too heavy. But then I'll come back and put a little extra barbed wire, little spots here and there. I'm not going to paint points, just a little dot here, dot there. Um, but it's okay that it bubbles up like that. That makes it look more uh, real. And it's okay that it's not solid. It's just choppy. That top one is a little thicker. And I'm going to go ahead and put my whole fence in, my post, and all my little vines and everything on the fence. So that's the next step. All right. I made a color. If you look at the picture, it's... It's a much brighter green color. Look at the mixture I did before. Mm -hmm. That bright green was pretty much that. It just didn't look right. I think that's because my other colors didn't match it as well. So you gotta be able to kind of adjust yeah. as you need to. But I went a little more yellow with it. And so this color seems to work. Um, got it thin enough and on my liner brush, I'm not gonna try to paint individual blades of grass. And I, don't, I, put, I did put this dark layer down first to put it on top of. Um, and I don't want to go all the way to the bottom with it. I just kind of want a little strip of lighter uh, color in there. So the way I think I'm going to do it is just kind of put some paint, put some paint in there. See that color? Mm -hmm. That color works pretty good. Do a little section. I'm just going to kind of put some paint with the tip of my brush. And I've got this, and you can use a regular fan brush if you want to too. But I've got this one that the oh, yeah, separated yeah. bristles mm -hmm. and just straight water. And just with the tips of it, kind of bounce that up and down and kind of push those mm -hmm. blades around. Just kind of blending the bottom out. That makes it not quite so intrusively bright, mm -hmm. too. It kind of fades the bottom out a little bit. Yeah. And I'm doing a section at a time. Just put some paint on. You're going to take it all the way to the edge? Push it out. Yeah, I'm going to go all the way down. And when it dries, I might even do a little bit more just to brighten it. Okay. But that's, the, that's optional. Definitely do the dark at the bottom if you if you want, but if you don't want the lighter part, then that's understandable too. 